there's another definition of a derivative that's completely equivalent to this definition that we currently know. I want to go over it again real quick though. So it all starts with we want the slope of the line tangent to some function at a certain point x. So how we do it is we pick some later point a comma f of a and then we drive a into x and as this point as this point approaches that point, this point approaches that point and the secant line tilts up or down as the case may be and approaches the slope and approaches the tangent line so the slope of the secant line approaches the slope of the tangent line. Now there's another way to look at this totally equivalent you have to understand it both ways. It's just a little bit of a difference with, with the, the symbols that we use. Instead of calling this A we're going to call this distance H some books call it delta x, I like h. So that means that the x coordinate of this point is x plus h, right? Fixed number plus that distance. And so this is no longer a comma f of a, it's x plus h comma f of x plus h. And so the slope of the tangent line, we're still interested in driving it to here. We still want to go through that process, right? of moving this point along the curve so that they meet, drive this in, 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 into this. But the one that we wind up with is the limit. I'm going to hold off on this for a second and say, now it's going to be the change in y is not f of a minus f of x, but f of x plus h minus f of x divided by the change in x now is x plus h minus x we're just this distance, h. And to get the derivative, the slope of the line tangent to the curve at x, we take h and we shrink it to zero. So the limit as h approaches zero of such an expression is an alternative definition for f prime of x. Uh, when I start doing proofs, of some, uh, you know, some some theorems that we're going to do a little bit later. I'm going to switch up between this and the and the other definition. So it is important to know and understand both of them. But they both pretty much work the exact same way. Even if you just algebraically substitute um, a equals x plus h, you'll find that it's totally equivalent the same way, right? This is a, so that's f of a minus f of x. And this h here, if you just rearrange this and bring it over the x, h is a minus x. It's pretty much the exact same thing. But let me show you a couple of examples using this definition just to get used to working through the algebra. I'll do it with 4x squared plus 2. So the problem is find f prime, differentiate this function, find the derivative. Any, any one of those is the same thing. So I'll do it with this definition. Limit as h approaches 0 f of x plus h. So to do that, I substitute x plus h in for where there used to be an x, and that'll be 4 times x plus h quantity squared plus 2. Right, that's the f of x plus h part. Minus f of x, don't forget to put this whole thing in parentheses here, uh, 4x squared plus 2 divided by h. So now we have to go through and simplify this entire thing. It can get a little bit nasty, but we can get through it. I'm going to take this and just write this down here, and then I'll combine it and uh, I'll put it all over H back up here after I clean it up a little bit. So I'm just going to take this and simplify it. When I multiply this out, I'll get 4. Uh, and when this gets multiplied out, I'll get x squared plus 2xh plus h squared, right? I have to distribute the 4 to each term in here, plus 2 minus 4x squared minus 2. So after I distribute that 4 to all pieces, that watch what's left over. I'll get 4x squared whoops, plus 8xh plus 4h squared minus 4x squared, minus 2. Uh, whoops, I forgot that too. That should be a, there should be a plus 2 in here. 
And so all that is going to be over h, and it's the limit as h approaches 0. Sorry that it's so sloppy. I'm going to erase this and clean up. There we go. Don't forget about that, too. So what's going on here? The 4x squares are going to cancel. Right. And the 2s are going to cancel, too. We have a plus 2 and a minus 2. So for those, they drop out. And so what's left on top is the limit as h approaches 0. We get 8xh plus 4h squared all over h. Now that everything else went, the 4x squared and the 2s went, I can cancel an h. I have to cancel both of the h's because h, we, we can only cancel factors. So that, that, this, great leaves me with the limit as h approaches 0. No more fraction. We have 8x plus 4h. And I take this limit as h approaches 0. This drops out. And we're just left with 8x which is the derivative f prime of x for this function is 8x. So it's exactly the same as what we would have gotten had we done the a minus x version of this. I invite you to try, but you can just take my word for it if you want. I'm going to do one more example of this, and uh, then we'll move on to a slightly new topic. I'll go with the radical x function because I don't want to beat this one <laughs> to death. Find the derivative of this using the alternate definition of the derivative, the, the limit as h approaches 0 is going to be radical, not a, but radical x plus h minus radical x, right, divided by h. So again, we have to rationalize this, multiply top and bottom by x plus h plus radical x over the same plus radical x. And what we come up with on top, break this off here, is limit as h approaches 0. When we foil this out, like we did in the other one, we're going to be left with square root square root is just going to be x plus h minus x, all divided by h times square root x plus h plus radical x. And so, same stuff sort of happens here. The x's are going to cancel, leaving you with just an h on top. When the h is on top by itself, it will cancel with this h on the bottom, leaving us with, in total, the limit as h approaches 0 of 1 over radical x plus h plus radical x. Then you take the limit as h approaches 0. You can plug 0 in for h, which gives you 1 over radical x plus radical x, or like we knew the answer to be, 1 over 2 radical x. So you'll get the same answer each time because it's just a different way of looking at the same process. So you don't have to do one or the other unless I ask you for one on a uh, test, but both of the methods you should be familiar with. Now the last thing I want to talk about is when a derivative will not exist. When a function will not be differentiable, when it won't have a tangent line, or at least a well-defined tangent line, there are three things that ruin differentiability. One of them is discontinuities. If a function is discontinuous at a point, it will not be differentiable at that point. Uh, for example, if I say, I mean, there's a variety of reasons for this, but if I have a function like this, say, if there's no point there, first of all, there's no way for us to have a tangent line because there's no f of a or f of x to even talk about. But even if it is defined, if f of a is here, if you go to do the slope of the tangent line to this, remember how it's defined. It's important to keep this in mind. We're starting here, and then we're going to some later and prior points. Say. So there's a point like this. We get a secant line. And as you make these points closer to one another, the slopes, in this case, are like blowing up, right? The slope is approaching like infinity from this way. And the slope of, an, slope of a vertical line is, un, is undefined. So it doesn't quite work that way. And from the other side, the same thing is happening, right? 
the slopes are going to negative infinity. So if it's going from positive infinity from this side, negative infinity from the other side, the, the whole thing is just a mess. The thing has to be, the function has to be nice and smooth and connected like this in order for us to be able to call it differentiable. There are a variety of reasons uh, of things that are going to ruin this. If you had a function, a discontinuity like this, suppose that you wanted to say um, it's differentiable here. Well, it's not because the tangent line might be approaching something specific from this side, but coming from the other side, they're going to minus infinity again. So it becomes something that's just like that. So when a function has a break in it like that, it is not considered to be differentiable. Continuity is a necessary but insufficient condition for differentiability. But discontinuities are one thing that will ruin differentiability. Another one is vertical tangents. Some functions grow and then they go vertical for just an instant. At these points, points of vertical tangency, there is still a line there. We can talk about it. I mean, we can talk about a vertical tangent line, but it's not. But the, the function is considered not to be differentiable at that point because the slope of this line does not exist. We can't even talk about its slope because there's no change in x to even reference. In the case like this, we would say that from both sides, the tangent line, the rate of change, is approaching infinity. See how I go up if I follow this thing along? Like that, I'm going vertical at that at that one spot there. So infinite slope does not exist. Vertical tangents are the second condition that ruin differentiability. And the third condition is corners. You have a corner in a function. The function is not differentiable at this point here. The reason being, suppose that you tried to compute the derivative using the definition of a derivative as a, a limit. If you started from this side, let's assume that the slope of this segment is, is 1 and the slope of this segment is minus 1. If you do that limit from this side, coming at it from this way, the slopes are all approaching negative 1, right? If, if, I, if I make the A point or the H, you know, the A point like here, the slope is negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1. It's always approaching negative 1 from this side. But from the other side, the slope is approaching, if I start here and start here, this being the point that I want to compute it at, it's positive 1, positive 1, the slope's positive 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, positive 1. So the slope, if we start here, is approaching something different from both sides. So that limit that constitutes the definition of a derivative does not exist for a, for a spot where it has a corner. Now a corner doesn't have to be something that's so sharp like this. This can count as a corner as well. That counts as a corner. Any kind of an abrupt change in the slope like that counts as a corner and a point of non-differentiability. So the three things that destroy differentiability at a point are discontinuities, vertical tangents, and corners.